I'd like to start by saying I hate the vibraphone. I mean, I do. I hate. Well, I hate the fact that I have to. I have to play it. I need a picture frame holder on it so that more people would want to play it and have it in their house. It came to the point where I was either going to play the music I liked and figure out a way to play the music that really mattered to me on my instrument, or I was going to have to do something else. So. I resolved uh, to simply play the music that I love and just be, realize that just because I play an instrument that's somewhat obscure, it doesn't mean that I can't make people dance and I can't make, uh, I can't play the music that, that means something to me. Finding people like, like Bill, like, uh, like Nat, like Mike, you know, people like Eric Biddens, people like uh, Doug Carter, you know, finding these guys um, was so important for me to be able to find my voice behind this instrument because they felt um, deeply about the music that I wanted to play and they felt that it was also music that they wanted to play. Um, so we created a vehicle that we could, you know, we could ride in together. In order for me to have the energy to do the things that I need to do every day and to be able to do these things that take a lot of energy out of me to give uh, everything I have to the students I teach, to give everything I have, of course, to my family and to give everything I have you know, to the music that I, I create, um, it means that I need to be in decent shape. It's important to me to help out the next generation of musicians because the last generation of musicians that are still out there killing it really helped me. They treated me in such a way that really encouraged me to continue to play um, and it really encouraged a lot of self-confidence in me. You know, you can't teach a kid self-confidence you know, but you can teach them skills, and through those skills they gain confidence. As the kids grow up and they go to college and they go to careers and they become dentists or lawyers or doctors or business uh, people or finance managers, you realize how much the skills that they picked up playing music in maybe marching band or in jazz band or any of those types of things or in private lessons, how much those skills have translated and cross-pollinated into whatever they decided to do. You know, when there's a lot of vibraphones and marimbas and even xylophones and bells and they're all coming together to play, it's, um, to me, it's just one of the most beautiful sounds on the planet, I, I think the fact that you're 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 playing a percussive instrument, so it's very primal, and also the fact that they're melodic is something that can't be achieved anywhere else. It can't be achieved with a lot of pianos, can't be achieved with a bunch of horns or strings, um, and the fact that you're playing these wonderful melodies and chords and lush, beautiful harmonies, but at the same time you're playing it percussively and you're playing it in a way that really kind of speaks with all of the things that I do. I have to give 100%, I have to give my energy, and it's usually a different type of energy from being a husband, to being a father, to being a, uh, a shepherd in my congregation, to being a musician, to being a teacher. All of these things can take place in one day and all of them require all of me. You know, and you have to get to the parents, really, you know what I mean? Because it's rough, I mean, the vibraphone is, no one even knows the name of the vibraphone. Yeah, they call it a xylophone, and it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not your fault that you think it's a xylophone. Um, it's not, because when you were young, I mean, I have a two-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old, and when we go through the alphabet, and we go A, B, C, this is a picture, A is apple, you know, uh, C is colloquialism, or whatever it, it is at C, but when you get to X, you see a xylophone every time. And it's not a xylophone, usually it's not. How often is it actually the picture of a xylophone? Like little wooden bars that are obviously wood and raised accidentals, you know, on the upper manual? It, it isn't that, it's usually kind of like some weird glockenspiel or some orf instrument, or anyway, something that looks like a vibraphone. So when you see something it's, uh, that looks like that, you just automatically think, oh look, xylophone, it's ingrained in your head as though you were some sort of baby that was being trained to offend me when I play concerts. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's not your fault. It's, um, you're, you're being conditioned. And so my job as a vibraphone player, I've taken it upon myself, is to 
uh, release you from the bondage of conditioning in which uh, you were all slaves to.